Okay. Waiting for uh, the chat room to get populated. Let's hold on a second. I'm a little early, like five minutes, but that's okay. I need to loosen up and warm up. Whenever you get into the chat, gentlemen or ladies, let me know if you could hear me. Get into the chat. All right. Now, I've been doing uh, YouTube lessons at 1 p.m. on Monday and Wednesday. I'm experimenting tonight because I'm trying to uh, service, I guess that's what you could say, service the people uh, with Pacific time. And it's only like, I think, 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. I'm not going to be doing a lesson here at 11, 10, or 12 o'clock at night. And in Europe, I think it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. So I'm trying this to see what happens. Now, you're viewing the lesson. I would 100% appreciate if you get into the chat and say hello. When you get into the chat, you know, just tell me who you are, where you're from, and how long you've been playing. I did advertise this on Facebook today. Uh, I'm going to work with uh, the uh, Gary Shafee Patterns books, his time functions, his symbol ostinatos, and I'm going to show you how I incorporate and come up with different things uh, from the stick control book. So if I do get somebody in the chat right now, I feel a little bit better. <laughs> So I could talk, and you can talk, and you know we could learn from each other. So to make this lesson worth your while, you should have a stick control book and a Gary Shafee patterns book. Let me put it up here. Let me see if I can show you wherever the camera is. This one here. It's called Time Functions. Now. He has a whole lot of different symbol ostinato patterns. And uh, with a backbeat on two and four, he refers to it as a fat back. It's not really, the term fat back gets a little confusing. All right? Um, we'll get into that in another session. But right now, I'm going to take a few different symbol patterns and explaining, explain that to you, how I approach this and how I work his book and how I work the uh, stick control book as foot patterns. Now, for those who do not understand what an ostinato pattern is, or he refers to it as symbol ostinatos, an ostinato pattern is a pattern which repeats itself over and over again, and you can free up one limb and play against the limb. Now, tonight we're going to have terms like... Um, the grid, any questions on anybody who's watching right now don't know the grid? It's a simple process. It just moves over one note. Now, I'm going to be in a 16th note formation. The way I count 16th notes, let me see something. Hold on. Is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, so throughout this lesson, basically, we're going to be counting that. So, for example, if I'm just going to play quarter notes on the ride symbol, I'm still going to count sixteenth uh, note counting. I'm going to play it light. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. This gets confusing here. This computer's driving me nuts. What is that? Hold on. So I'm maintaining that kind of straight up and down feel. And if I'm playing, for example, we'll work, we'll work an, an ostinato pattern as quarter notes on the ride symbol. My hi-hat's going to be two and four. I'm using a heel and toe method. And the heel and toe means on the count of one, 
my heel comes comes up, I mean my, my toe comes up. On the count of two, my toe comes down to close the hi-hat. So I have one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So I'm just going to play quarter notes on the ride cymbal. I'm going to play two and four with my hi-hat, plus I'm going to put a backbeat on the snare on two and four. So I have one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. Now that's a pattern which is considered an ostinato pattern because I'm going to be playing that over and over again. Now this is just one of maybe 20, 30 different ostinato patterns that you can come up with. You can be creative and make your own. For example, I take the stick control book, and this is the lesson I did the other night, or the other day on, on, uh, on this channel. Instead of me playing my ride cymbal, one E and the two E and the three E and the four, in my hi-hat, two and four, one E and the two E and the three, four, I've taken the stick control book, and I'm doing the first line. I'm taking the right, left, that's the first line. The first measure would be one and two and three and four and. And now I'm going to play. Instead of using the right symbol on, on the count, all the rights would be on the, the one, two, three, four on the floor tom tom. And the ands would be with the hi hat. So I'd have one E and a two E and three E and a four E and. Now I'll implement, I mean, I'll put in the, black, the backbeat on the count of two and four while I'm doing that. One E and a two E and three E and a four E and one E and a two and three E and four and one two three four one two three four. That's my interpretation of how I came up with that from the stick control book. I'm actually doing line one between the right hand and the hi hat. One two three. What do we do with the bass drum? Now, this is no part of any particular song, or I guess you, you can you kind of, uh, it's an exercise to develop control of all your limbs. In this case, it's the bass drum, the hi-hat, and the ride cymbal, and the snare. My ride cymbal, or my, in this case, my floor tom-tom is going to be consistent. My left foot's going to be consistent. My left hand is going to be on two and four. That's going to be consistent. So that's not going to stop. Now, if you go to time functions, I believe it's page 11. Right. He has, he calls it the fat back exercises. So what I'm going to do, you take the first, we're going to take the first four. The first four is telling me, let me change the view in the camera maybe so we can see it a little bit better. Let's go to a different view first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, that one pattern I just did, the, the right hand, one, two, three, four on the floor tom-tom, hi-hats on all the ends, and my snare drum is going to be on two and four. So if you really analyze what he's doing for the first four measures, it's actually the part of a grid. Now the grid means to move over one note. So if you look at the page and you have a, a note on the top and a note on the bottom, the bottom is indicating bass drum. The note on top is indicating the snare drum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play just the bass drum part. If you see, it's actually written in 2-4. You repeat it, it's 4-4, four, four, or two measures of 2-4. So now, I'm going to do the first line, just the bass drum. The bass drum here is on 1 and 3. I'm not going to play the hi-hat, nor the snare drum, or the floor tom-tom. I'm just going to count in 16th notes, and I'm going to put the bass drum where it falls. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, one E and a, two E 
and a 3, E and a 4, E and a. Now, you go to the second measure, the, the bass drum is now not placed on the 1 and 3, he moves it over 1, 1 count, which is the E of 1 and the E of 3. So again, I'm going to do the same thing, 1, E and a 2, E and a 3, E and a 4, E and a 1, E and a 2, E and a 3, E and a 4, E and a. Okay, then again, the next measure, that's the third measure, number three. He's moving the bass drum now from the E of one and the E of three. He's moving it over one more count to the and of one and the and of three. So you have one E and a uh, two E and, I'm sorry, not on the two, I'm sorry, my apologize. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. I don't, Paul. You just get here, you're late. Time out, chair. So now, we have one more, number four. Number four would be uh, the bass drum is going to move over one now. And it's part of the grid, if you can see that. What do I have in here? Hold on. Instead of now on the and of one and the and of three, uh, we're going to go to the duh of one and the duh of three. So I'm going to count one E and duh, two E and duh, three E and duh, four E and duh, one E and duh, two E and duh, three E and duh, four E and duh. Now, with the ostinato pattern that I just gone over, and you didn't, we did this last night, Paul, so just be patient. I'm going to continue on to another one in a few seconds. So we're established one E and uh, two E and three. And I'm going to play line with the first part, the bass drum. One E and two E and three E and uh, four E and one E and uh, two E and three E and uh, four E and next. Two E and three E and four E and one E and two E and three E and four E and then to the duh. What is that? What is that detention? Yeah, okay. You can't take your drumsticks in detention. All right, well. That's one, one pattern, that ostinato. Let's change that pattern. I'm just going to go to the first four, the grid, of the, of the uh, moving it over one. I'm going to change the ostinato pattern to, I'm going to take the hi-hat now, and I'm going to place just straight eighth notes. One, two, three, four. Now, for using whoever is not familiar with this particular kind of concept or approach, I would do it very slow and count 16. But notice my right hand. My right hand is going to be going down, up, down, up. Now, the reason why it comes up is to get a, a, a clear sound. I'm going to sort of accent the count of one and, and two, three and four, one E and a two. Nice and easy. The difference in sound. I'm not playing like this. That's a, not a very musical sound. You can play it, it's not incorrect if that's what you like, but I play it like this to get a very musical sound. One E and a two E and three E and a four E and. Again, we're going to play now the uh, snare drum on two and four. One E and a two E and three E and a four and. One E and a two and three E and a four and. Now, we're going to put the bass drum down to count to one and three. One E and a two. Nice and easy. We're not trying to prove anything. This is an instructional platform. One E and a two and three E and a four. Now move to the E. One E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three E and a four. Now to the end. Two and three E and a four and one E and a two and 
three E and da 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 da. One E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two. Now that's just two different ostinato patterns. And the way I teach that is open-handed as well. Instead of me using my right hand on the hi-hat, I'm using my left hand on the hi-hat. Three and, you can't see it, I'm trying to hear you. Let me, let me put it there. One E and a two E and three E and a four and one E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three E and here you go. One E and a two and three E and a four, so on and so forth. Now, that's two different ostinatos. You could do actually one through 22 like that, both right-handed and left-handed. And uh, let me do a few more different ostinato patterns. What I like, the one I really like, I mean, there's a lot of them. I like them all, but there's some I kind of partial to, and they kind of sound funkier. All right. For example, two sixteenths and an eighth. Now, if you run, if you don't know how to read, you know you're going to have some issues here. So, you're a professional drummer, or trying to become a professional drummer, or want to become a better drummer. That's better said. Okay. What you want to do is learn how to read. Learn how rhythm falls within the framework of the time signature that you're playing in. The four, four, three, eight, seven, eight, three, four, nine, eight, eleven, four, all that good stuff. It's extremely important. I think it's pretty essential to really. You don't have to like you know read like uh, take a, a, from a symphonic orchestra and uh, you know play down ninety-five measures in, set in with all kinds of different figures. If you can do that, you know that's great. But you know basic reading. Understanding how rhythm falls. All right. Now we're going to do the grid again, and this time, what we're going to do is change the pattern. We're going to use two sixteenths and the eighth. We have one e and that's the motion that occurs with the right hand. Why does that occur? Well, I want to put that kind of push or that kind of accent on the count of one. E and a two E and three E and four E and and now I'm gonna drop two and four on the snare as the back beat. Look, look at the right hand. It's exaggerated because like I said, it's an instructional platform. I'll do it slow. One E and a two E and Three E and a four E and a. If you maintain that mo that motion, eventually it's going to become shaken. It's a natural way to play. I mean, you know, everybody talks about molar or uh, whatever they talk about. I, I I don't know. They get very confused. It's not molar. It's not stone. It's not Adler. It's the laws of physics, and that, that's going to be another lesson with. I guess Alan Herman. Alan Herman is going to be doing a, one of these broadcasts in the next couple weeks, and he'll demonstrate the level system, the difference between molar and uh, whatever that is. Molar. I mean, there wouldn't be no such thing as molar if it was not for Jim Chapin. Jim Chapin, the molar technique. Well, molar didn't teach that, but he, you know, God bless Jim Chapin. I, like I, I, it's not to be condescending. I, I, I really have a, the utmost respect for that man, Jim Chapin. He has contributed so much to the drum world. But if it wasn't for him saying this is the molar technique, there would be no molar. And guys get so confused. Like I have a few different groups on Facebook, which uh, we have a lot of good drum discussions. And one of the, con one of the, the, the uh, posts were, when you play, do you use the molar technique? And uh, everybody says, for sure, all the time, only when I need it. Yes, I use it all the time. So I commented back and I said, can anybody please explain what m the molar system or the molar technique is? Do you know only one person was able to, to comment on that and nobody else did? 
You know, it's like being part of the gang, man. Yeah, I use the molar. You don't know what the molar is. What are you talking about? It's not molar. It's not stone. It's the laws of physics. Like I said, I'm not going to get deep into that right now because we're going to leave that, that subject. And he's a brilliant man, is Alan Herman. He studied with Joe Morello as well, as I did, for the same amount of time. And he has this stuff down. Okay? And, you know, I, I, let, let's go back to the ostinato pattern. The two sixteenths and the eighth. I'm sorry. I go off like the 4th of July. And we're going to drop the two and four. And we're going to do the grid. And then we're going to go to the stick control book and show you what, how I take what I'm doing from these patterns and utilize the stick control book in a different manner. So now we're going to play the bass drum on the counts of one and three, and I'm going to do it slow. One E and two E and three E and four E and. Now I'm exaggerating the motion for, for me to demonstrate or display to you so you can envision it. So when I'm playing, it's there. I don't have to think about it, but as if this is something new for you, you would want to do it this slow. One, E, and, a, two, E, and, a, three, E, and, a, four, E, and, a. You're exaggerating. You're, you're getting that motion happening. And you can do it to the left hand. I got to take it on this side. I got to change the camera. I'm sorry, but I'm going to take it. I'm, I'm a little awkward here. One, E, and. Three E and a four E and a. Okay, let's stay, go back to the right side and let's play the bass drum now on the E. One E and a two E and three E and a four E and one E and a two E and three E and a four E and. Now. Practicing that way, I, I actually want you to do it slower because it takes a tremendous amount of concentration. And that concentration and being doing it that sl slowly, let me, let me just demonstrate it slow. We'll put the bass drum just on the one and three. One, E, and, the, two, E, and, the, three, E, and the four E and the. You do it that slow, you're going to strengthen yourself. You, you know, a lot of guys, they sit down and say, all right, I'm going to practice. And they try to practice single strokes to get them as fast, fast or faster than anybody else in the world. Double bass drums to get them as fast or faster than anybody else in the world, which makes absolutely no sense to me. That's not practicing. That's not strengthening you. What you need to do is slow it down, analyze what you're doing. We're not doing any music. We're doing the mechanics of what is occurring when you, you are uh, executing, how to develop the sound. Once you develop that, and once you get, get that strong, you can take it wherever you want, and you can put it into any kind of music that you want to put it into. Okay? Now... Doing it slow, both right-handed and left-handed, or you could you say, a.k.a. open-handed, that's fine. Like I said, I need to change this around. I apologize. I need to move the camera a little bit. But anyway, that's the two ostinatos, or three ostinatos we work with. All right? The, the next one we're going to do, well, no, let, yeah, let me go to the, to the, uh, back to the eighth notes. And I want to show you how I get the stick control book. I'm not going to do like the whole page because it's going to take a couple hours. I'm just going to do as much as I can and make it uh, as clear as I can. So, you know, if you want, if this is going to work for you, this is going to help you, work on it. If not, just, you know, let it go, go someplace else, do something, you know, work on something else. Now, my interpretation of utilizing the stick control book and the brilliance of George Lawrence Stone, what I do is I use a substitution. You know, I'm going to do the first measure. And I'm going to consolidate the first two measures, rather. And instead of me counting one and two and three and four, which is one measure, I'm going to count one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the, 
which makes it one measure but a different count. So if I took that the way it's presented on one surface, it would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now if I say, okay, fine, let's eliminate the lefts. So that's going to give me with my right hand, one E and a, E and a, three E and a, four E and a. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so now I'm going to say, all right, <clears throat> let me play, instead of my right hand, let me look at that line and play all the rights and leave the lefts out and just play with the rights with the bass drum. So I'm going to have this with the bass drum only. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, again, one E and a, two E and a. Hold on a second. One E and a, two E and a. Three E and a four E and all right, and I'm gonna do the do the the one pattern one and just simple one simple pattern. And then look at it down ten down up down up four and one two three four one two three four one two three four. Okay. And again, left-handed. One, two, three. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Both ways. That's the first line. We go to the second line, and it's presented as a left-hand lead. And we're thinking that that line now as one measure in sixteen notes. One e and a. E and a three, E and a four, E and who's this? Is that Ed? Yeah, how you doing, Ed? I think. Let me put my glasses. This old age shit, man. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Ed, how you doing? All right. Well, you missed a good part of the lesson, which is okay. I'm gonna keep going as far as I can, as long as I can. So now we're on sec the second line, and we're interpreting it instead of. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. I'm going to eliminate the lefts. So when I continue, I'm going to make all the rights now the bass drum. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Up against this pattern. Three E and a, four E and. That's line one and line line two. Now we'll take another ostinato. Let's take the paradiddle ostinato, which is really simple. Everybody practices your paradiddles trying to do it 900 miles an hour. It doesn't make any musical sense. They don't know where to put it inside of a tune or inside of a groove that they're playing with the band. And again, let me reiterate on that, a groove. Nobody can teach you the groove. No one. The only thing that can teach you the groove is you playing with other musicians, is the music. You could have all the mechanics in the world, and you can't feel the music or hear it or use it musically. It makes absolutely no sense. Okay, so now everybody's doing a paradiddle, and you know, and a lot of guys I see do a paradiddle, they, they do it like this. One, two, and then they lift the stick up, which is, to me, a waste of time. I utilize the levels like we talked about before. Down. Always in position to attack. That's my speed stroke. Now I'm not going to sit here and play, you know, that, you know, start doing it fast because it makes no sense. It's not what I'm showing you. So I take, for example, the paradiddle. Instead of playing it on, I'm going to play it on, on two different voices instead of. Now you got a pattern. You have a funk thing going on. It sounds pretty funky. Now, no matter what you want to do, the re one of the other reasons why you're doing it slowly is to maintain a consistent sound. An ostinato, like I said before, is a pattern which repeats itself over and over again. 
not only rhythmically, but sound-wise, you know, uh, and you got to try to maintain that. So now we go, let's go back to the chafee, the one through four, the grid. Okay? And we utilize the paradigm. Well, I'm going to do it slow. And I'm still, you know, I'm getting that equal serum. Now the bass is going to be on one and three. What is that noise? Excuse me a minute. I hate this stuff. All oh, doing all this technical stuff. So now we're taking the paradigm. I'm counting one, two. One E and the two E and the three E and the four. Bass drum. Ah. On the E. On the A. Hard to count and <laughs> play this count and look at the computer. Let me do the E again. And then I'm going to move over to the and, then to the da. Let me start with the one. One, three, four, one, two, three, back to the E. Now to the da. So on and so forth. Now, that, that's going to complete what I'm going to do with ostinato tonight, okay? And how to use, how, to, how it's just a basic uh, intro to where my lessons go uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays. And if this populates correctly on uh, Thursdays, I will be consistent on Thursdays as well. Maybe a little later, instead of 8 o'clock, maybe 8.30. Okay? Now, Paul and Ed uh, are members of my site. And we go over a lot of things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of open the lesson uh, a little and uh, leave some questions. Or perhaps, gentlemen, Paul and Ed, some things that you want to revisit or all the different ways that, that I've come up with or shown you how to do uh, the stick control book, how to utilize the stick control, control book, how to play the jazz patterns, uh, hand technique. You let me know what you want me to do so I can do another 15 minutes here. Give me something, you know, not too difficult, guys, but, you know, something that is going to maintain the interest of uh, the other members or the other viewers. Now, if you want the PDFs on whatever I've gone over, I'm going to put my email in there. Uh, maybe you could do it, Paul, for me, or maybe you, Ed, mattpatella1001 at gmail.com, and you could email me, and I'll send you the PDFs. Okay? Now, I'm opening up the lesson now to, to have some questions, have Paul or Ed or whoever else wants to ask, hopefully I can answer them. Okay, Paul? Okay, Ed? We are going to start the journey with these ostinato patterns, again, with the syncopation book. And also, uh, the trip of fills and the jazz patterns and whatever. Let me see, let me get my glasses, hold on. All right, yesterday's lesson, we were talking about last night. Uh, remember what I said about doing that, and then we're going to go back to the ostinato pattern. Doing it slowly. What happened there? All right, thank you, Paul. Anybody wants the PDFs? Now, what I did last night is what I just did before, but I only used uh, the first 
four uh, measures of Shafi. And we established the ostinato pattern. The ostinato pattern, well, we're going to continue from last night. I'm playing my, my right hand on the floor tom-tom. I'm maintaining a 16th note pulse. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. I'm going to play two and four on the snare drum. One E and a two E and three E and a four. One E and a two and three E and a four. Now, I'm going to add my hi-hat. And when I'm playing this particular thing, this particular pattern, what I'm doing is I'm using my hi-hat as a crushing method. My heel is always up so I can get the slam, that nice tight chick. So I have one E and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one E and the two and three E and the four. I do, that's what we're going to play off of. Now, you, I did the grid last night with you gentlemen, nice and slow. One E and a two and three and four and one E and a two and three and four and one E and two and three E and four and one and two and three and four and one on the end. That was the first four. You want me to go further with this one? I mean, to, to, you know, what I'm going to do, I'll do it really slow. Let, let's do uh, number, let, let's work it out. Number, number five it is, okay? The bass drum now is on one E and three E. So all he's doing is adding to the grid, the notation. So you have uh, on number five, one E and uh, two E and uh, Three E and uh, four E and uh. so now nice and slow. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. All right. Do you understand that? Any questions on that one? We can go to line six. Is that clear, uh, Ed and Paul and whoever else? I wish you guys would get into the chat or ladies get into the chat. <coughs> we had somebody on the YouTube channel here yesterday afternoon, somebody from Brazil. Nice guy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but he, he was putting in the chat box in Spanish. They don't have a translator. All right, let me see what you got going on here. And I keep getting all these notifications that my videos that he watched on YouTube is nice, but all the comments were in Spanish. Okay. No, no, no. That's not what I did, Paul. The stick control book, there's a couple of variations here. The way we're doing that, uh, for example, uh, let's do the, the first line, how we get the bass drum pattern. Remember, instead of counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four in this two measure increment, we're taking the first line and putting it as one measure in 16th note formation. So I'd have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And then I say, okay, I'm going to reference off the stick control book. And the way I'm going to reference from that page, hold, hold on, wait a minute. Robert, how are you, Robert? Okay, now instead of, uh, we're going to eliminate the right, uh, left, and that's going to give me with the rights one E and a uh, two E. 3E and the uh, 4E and. So what I do is now, instead of me playing all the rights, I'm looking at the page, and I say, all right, I'm eliminating the left, and I'm going to play just the rights. I'm in a 16th note formation, and I'm going to play all the rights now instead of my right hand, 
with my base run. So that gives me now with the, uh, the pattern that I'm going to use with the bass drum. One E and a two E and three E and a four E and. We got that, Paul? Ed? Robert? We have that? So now I established the pattern. One E and a two E and. So I'll put my bass drum in first. One E and two E and three E and four E and one E and two E and three E and four E and. You got that, Paul? Number two, you know, I'm going to go on to line two if I don't hear any. You got it, okay? You got it, Ed? All right, now we'll go to line. Robert, okay. Now we go to line two. And line two is presented in the stick control book as one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. And now we're going to make that line, again, one measure. One E and a, two E and a, E and a, four E and a. We're going to eliminate the left, so that gives me one E and a, two and a, three E and a, four E and a. And I'm looking at the line. I'm eliminating the lefts, and I'm going to play just the rights with the bass drum. So that's going to give me one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now this is a little strange, so bear with me here. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And do it slower. One E and the two E and I'm sorry. That's pretty hard, but that's what it is. That's what we're doing. I haven't really worked on that. I presented it, and Monday come Monday, we're going to smoke on that stuff. What I like to do, uh, we understand it, all three of you and all 95 other people, they don't understand it. All right, let's go over some things that we've done. Oh, what is this saying? Tell me. The chat disconnected. Success uh, is back. Okay. We you understand. Does that help you somewhat, Paul? Ed? Robert? All right. Anything else that you gentlemen want to go over? Like triple fill-ins or jazz patterns or rudiments? <laughs> the three rudiments. Singles, doubles, and flans. And everything else is a combination of all of those. Any request? If not, then I'm going to close it up. I'm going to try again to do this again next Thursday in addition to my other broadcast on Monday and Wednesday. Monday, Wednesday, 1 p.m. on this channel. And if it works out... All right, good, Paul. I'm glad that, that I could help. I mean, I don't mean to... to belittle anybody here I just it's better see as, a, as an instructor or, or a, a, an educator so to speak uh, it's not e you should know this Paul I'm not going yet let us let me finish my statements here Paul don't leave okay I can't assume anything see I only know Paul and now Robert and whoever else is watching from the computer. I've met Ed in person when I went to Quincy. We, we, we viewed or we visited the uh, Zildjian factory. Ed's a really, really nice guy. All right, so now what we're going to do, all right, uh, like I said, if this is going to help, if this starts to populate, I will do one every Thursday, but it's going to have to be a little later at 8.30, okay? So I have Monday Tuesday, 1 p.m. on this channel, and I'm going to try it again next Thursday on this channel at 8.30. And then on Monday nights and Wednesday nights on my uh, website, mattpatellaLiveLessons.com. Now, I wanted to go over a lot of different things here tonight because I wanted to keep this sort of open and, you know, to revisit things 
that we have done in the past. Not that I've run out of things to teach. As you, can, as you guys know, you have all, a ton of all those PDFs. And again, whoever is watching would like the PDF, email me at mattpatella1001 at gmail.com. Now, with all that being said, uh, it's time for me to say have a good night. I'm going to finish my coffee, have a cigarette, and then have some dinner. Okay, Robert. Okay, Paul. And okay, uh, Ed. Robert, where do you live? What, t- what state? Because uh, the last weekend of March, I think it's the last Saturday of March, I'm heading down to Delaware with a few of the students from uh, the site. Uh oh. Hold on. Oh, you're in Michigan. All right, Robert. I'm not smoking. This is a vape. You see what this is? It's a vape. See? I'm not inhaling. I'm just uh, hanging out with it. That's all right. I'm trying to, to quit smoking, and it's very difficult. I've been smoking a million years. All right, with all that being said, let Uncle Matt go do what I have to do. Ed, thank you for stopping by. Paul, Robert. I didn't know Tony D. McCullough, but I did have, see, Tony D. McCullough at that time was teaching, I think, Trenton State College, which I attended, but I never studied with him. I know his name, and as a matter of fact, I had, in the last year, about four or five of his former students. Paul, stop lecturing me. My wife lectures me all day. All right. Anyway, uh, you're welcome, Ed. You're welcome, Paul, and you're welcome, Robert. I need to get off the uh, computer. Okay? No questions. I hope this has helped you somewhat.